Hey everybody, it's GoblinX, and welcome to the Dominar United Early Access Events. Thank you very much to Wizards of the Coast for supplying me with this Early Access account, where everything you see today was provided by Wizards of the Coast. So, um, with that whole thing out of the way, I've completely lost my train of thought, but I'm super excited. It's Dominar United. It is the newest draft format. It is the major draft format that we are going to be playing for the next few months here until Brothers War comes out. The newest standard set that is rotating out all of the, um, all of the sets from more than a year ago. A lot of really, really cool stuff about this set, and we've opened up a super sweet pack one, pick one bomb rare here, so let's just get into the draft. This is what I'm scooping up, the Elder Dragon War. This is a saga with the new mechanic that says read ahead, meaning you can skip to chapter two or skip immediately to chapter three. If you don't need to wrath the board, just play this and play this on chapter three. Immediately just get a four mana, four, four flyer. Really, really good card and limited. Every chapter of this is uh, relatively impactful, so the ability to play play whichever chapter you want and have it uh, just continue on like a normal saga after that is pretty good. And uh, yeah, as I said, just four mana, four, four flyer, already a great limited card. So easy pack, one pick, one bomb rare there. See what we've got for pick two here. Fires of Victory is a red card. Uh, deals damage to target creature planeswalker equal to the number of cards in your hand. So it's good early and bad late. That's a very interesting card. I don't expect it's the kind of card that I take super highly in a format that has Lightning Strike at common, which is just one in red instant three to target to any target. That's just much more consistent than this card, but it is interesting. Um, I don't know if I take that here. None of these uncommons are super, super good um, outside of that. So I don't see a really, really obvious pick in this pack. Geyser is a pretty nice blue sorcery for some interaction. Bounce something, draw a card. If you kick it, you gain three and a half. You don't really need to kick it for this to be pretty good. I might take Tolarian Geyser. Hammerhand looks good for a really aggressive deck. And I expect this is a format where you're supposed to take duels pretty highly. Um, I might even just take a duel here, because honestly, yeah, I don't think that burn spell is consistent enough to take super highly. It's honestly between that like blue interaction or the uh, the dual land. The reason that I like taking duels highly in this format, it is my very first draft, so this is subject to change, but it's because there are a lot of cards that care about having a variety of basic land types, and the duels in this format have that variety of basic land types. So they're really good with cards like Sunbathing Root Walla that cares about the number of basic land types you control, and the other thing that's very prevalent in this set is off-color kicker effects, like blue cards with red kickers, white cards with red kickers. Every single color of card has a card that kicks for any other color at, uh, at common, so being able to get random off-colors is pretty nice. So I'm going to take the Willard Ridge line here. And uh, for this pack, again, I don't think the uncommons are great. Tetra is really cool, but super slow. I don't think she's going to push us off of our Elder Dragon War here, get us off of red. So I'm just going to go for this pretty sweet-looking common, the Coalition War Brute, which shows off another mechanic in the format which is Enlist. Enlist means when this creature attacks, you can tap an additional creature you control as long as that creature is not attacking and it doesn't have summoning sickness. And if you do, you add that creature's power to the Warbrute's power. So tap a 2-2, two, two, give the Warbrute plus 2 plus 0 till out of turn, meaning this can attack for a lot of trample damage into, into many board states at a 4-mana 3-4 trample, even if you don't enlist it. Seems like a pretty great deal, and I'm pretty happy with that card. Sacred Peaks seems sweet here for the same reason that Wooded Ridgeline did. But there's also a really nice white common. I think our Givian Cavalier is going to play really well. It's 3-mana for a 2-2, two, two, and it spits out a 1-1 one, one Soldier token. A lot of the white cards in this format care about having a lot of... Uh, um, tokens or just a lot of creatures out in general to the point where pretty much every two colored card that involves white cares about having a lot of creatures like even the black white card here cares about sacrificing expendable creatures so i like our giving cavalier a lot i think it's going to be a top common and uh i'm going to scoop it up here all right, lots of options here. We have Astore, Bear of Blades. Never read this card before. It's a four mana, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You can reveal an equipment or a vehicle and put it into your hand. I don't think there's a lot of good equipment or vehicles here. This seems much more like a build around for constructed formats than for limited. Might be interesting to, tra to take it and try it out, but as a four mana, four, four, that's mildly hard to cast. Not really worth it if we're not going to have equipment or vehicles, and I just don't know that we will consistently. So I think I'll just take a Sacred Peaks here. This seems pretty solid to me. I could also take Yavamai Iconoclast. I'm not married to white right now, and I do already have a green-red duel, which means if I go green-red, this is a two mana, three, two trample at worst, and at best you can kick this. Be a, a two mana, four, three trample haste for one turn. So yeah, I think I'll take Iconoclast there, but Sacred Peaks... Also a definite, um, a definite uh, possibility. 
So pick six, destroy evil is pretty cheap. Even though it's narrow, it only kills big creatures. It's only two mana and it's slightly more flexible than your general smite the monstrous. It's gonna destroy a creature with toughness four or greater or destroy an enchantment, that seems fine. Join forces might be better in this deck though, just a combat trick that goes a little wide. It's probably better than heroic charge because it is just cheaper and it's gonna be pretty uh, equivalently impactful. So join forces, destroy evil, and heroic charge are all fine options. None of these black cards look incredible, nor does the blue card. Nothing really pushes off off pushes us off any of our colors. I'll just take this random white's um, combat trick. Ooh, wow, some great red cards here. Viushino Branch Rider is a way better Raging Goblin, which is kind of exciting. Raging Goblin with a good fire breathing ability, three mana to give it plus two, plus zero till end of turn. So it's a good mana sink late in the game. You can make sure your little 1-1 one, one aggro creature trades up into high toughness creatures your opponent has. So I do like Branch Rider a lot, even if I'm mono red, but I'm actually looking maybe red green here, where the Branch Rider goes up a lot in value because of the kicker ability to have it, to have it come to play with extra counters. There's also Dragon Whelp, which is fine. I feel like this might be slow enough by modern limited standards to not be great, um, but it is the best for sticking just mono red because the other two cards, Keldon Strike Team and the Raging Goblin thing, both require an off-color kicker, so I don't know. We'll go for the classics, the original here, Dragon Whelp, all the way back from Alpha, the first magic set ever made. It has been reprinted now, just a 2-3 flyer with a little bit of fire breathing. You can't do it too many times or you'll have to sack it. Gaia's Might's an okay little trick if we go red-green. Plus two, plus two at minimum, pretty much. Thrill of Possibilities, kind of whatever card draw. We can try out the Fires of Victory. Don't expect it's going to be consistent enough to be great, but we'll give it a shot here. We are definitely in red, so there's that. I actually like Goblin Picker. This seems like a pretty flexible card here. A two mana, two, two on curve is fine. And when you get into the late game, it makes sure you don't flood out by letting you discard lands to draw more cards. So this seems pretty nice. Furious uh, Furious Bellow also seems pretty good. This is your 2 mana plus 3 plus 0 first strike instant for the set, which we've seen a lot of times. It's always been fine, but it's that plus you scry one, so it's got to be even better than fine now. So, I don't know. I'm going to go with the Goblin Picker, though. The Root Wallow was another definite option here, because we are looking we're like 50-50 between going red, white, or red, green. Um, Hammer Hand looks great if you're going to be really aggressive. And I guess we're trying to do that probably more so than trying to play something like Meteorite here or Heroic Charge. Take a Hammer Hand. Give a creature plus one plus one haste permanently. Stop a blocker one time. I don't know if I'm going to want a ton of copies of this card. And they seem to be going late. Timely Interference. I think this is a really nice blue trick. Um, I'm not tied to any color yet. I might actually take this because we're actually red here so we could even get the kicker. But even just... Using this as a trick when your opponent blocks your 2-2 with their 2-2, like, that's just nuts. Make their 2-2 a 1-2 and draw a card in the process. Uh, protect seems good if you're blue-white specifically, but I'm going to take Mesa Cavalier because if we're blue, we're going to be blue-red, not blue-white. Unless I do get a lot of good dual lands till we can go, so that we can go all three colors. I'll take Enthrall to the pit there. And a Battle Rage Blessing for the side. Okay, pack two. We have some... I was going to say we have some options, but we don't really. I guess since I did take a blue card, we can actually take the blue card out of this pack, which I think is probably the best card in the pack. It's just this blue common. This is a 4-mana 3-2 flyer. When it dies, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So it doesn't get you that card draw until it dies, but when you do, it replaces itself with the best card out of the top two of your library, which seems pretty good to me. If this were an enter the battlefield effect, this card would be absolutely insane, which is what makes me feel like it's pretty good even as a death trigger. Um, there's also Sunbathing Root Walla. I'm passing up on a lot of those, and that would be great if we were in red green domain. I don't think this Lurgoyf looks very good. Power equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard, so it's not going to be powerful to late game. I'm just going to take the lookout here, maybe try to move to blue red. Get past a really good white rare though. Two mana for a 2 2 with enlist, and whenever you enlist with this card, you're gonna scry two, and you can discard a card to give it indestructible until end of turn, which is incredibly good. That means it's really, really good at attacking into cluttered board states because you are tapping your own creature so that, uh, so that this is big enough to attack into a high toughness creature of your opponent. And even if your opponent blocks, you can just discard a card from your hand to keep this on the board. 
and just win that combat. So that card is nuts, and I guess we are just red-white at that point. That's going to solidify it. That is a strong enough white card to try to fight pretty hard to stick in white. Now we can take another Coalition War Brute, which seems like a solid 4-drop. Uh, Furious Mellow would be a great wheel, and uh, Destroy Evil would be fine. This uh, Automatic Librarian also seems like a fine filler card for like any deck. Scry 2 when it hits the board. Not bad. Just a better version of that... Um, that one uh, chrome cat from Streets of New Capenna. So we're looking pretty aggressive. We definitely want to get more cheap creatures is the biggest thing we need to pick up here. Cheap creatures and removal. Don't feel like our removal is great either. Yeah, that's what we're really missing out on. Cheap creatures and removal. If we can't get removal in an aggressive strategy like Boros, we can use combat tricks instead to try to win fights. So here's another Argivian Cavalier, which I like a bunch, but Keldon Strike Team seems like a pretty big finisher for the Boros decks. Five mana for a 3-1 and two 1-1s, one -ones, all of which have haste, so five hasting power on the board that late. Goes super wide, seems really good, but I do quite like the Cavalier. Like both of these a lot. Furious Bellow, love this as well as potential pickup to use as removal. Use the combat trick as removal, but hoping we can get those later. I think... Because Strike Team is basically a 5-mana card, I'm going to take another Cavalier, because you look at this curve, we have a lot at 4 already. I want more 3 and less. Specifically, really, really want like 2-mana stuff, but it looks like we're not really going to get that here. There's probably not a lot of really, really good 2-mana creatures in this format, because um, they probably wanted to try really hard to make sure that this format did not devolve into just a bunch of aggro piles again. Because this format has a lot of mechanics that are way cooler in a slower format, like Kicker and Domain and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we could take another Warbrute, we could take a Kavu for another 3-drop, Cavalier for another 3-drop, or we could take Fire Nato for our first removal spell, or I guess second after Fires of Victory. Fire Nato's not great removal, but that was one of the major things I said I'm missing right now. This is a pretty easy Yavamaya Steel Crusher, 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two within list seems pretty good to me. Just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two on curve, and if you get in a position where enlisting is going to be valuable, then you just get a huge upside off this, and it's just main deck artifact hate out of nowhere for some reason, which is interesting. Could try to be Naya aggro and pick up this Neshoba Brawler. Um, if we have a Mountain Forest and Plains out, this will be a 2 mana 3-3 three, three Trample. If I want to get a little spicy with it, throw in some green for Iconoclast and Brawler. Seems a little spicy for my taste for my very first uh, draft video in the format, so we're going to stay uh, pretty basic for now. But I am going to do a ton of drafts of this, uh, of this format on the Twitch channel today during the Early Access event. So if you want to see me getting a a more firm read on the format and getting getting more spicy with the strategies and really trying to uh, explore a little bit definitely check that out in the link below okay so now we've got balduvian berserker when it dies deals damage equal to its power to any target doesn't have flying or anything it's just a three mana one three list that is a weird card that is the kind of weird card i want to just try out and see if it does anything but i can't imagine this does that much work. I guess we'll find out. We're giving it a shot. Smash to Dust does a lot of different things, but it still doesn't feel main deckable. I don't think I like any of this. So I'll just take Gaia's Might in case we do go into like Naya Domain Aggro. We did Wheel the Destroy Evil, which we could play in this deck. Since we are low on removal, we can definitely play Furious Bellow. Love that. It is a very nice pickup, and we get another one. Going to be a big fan of that card in this deck. Currently have 11 creatures, so we have 12 because the Elder Dragon War is very much a creature. It is a 4-4 flying dragon. So we need to pick up like 6 more creatures. That's the biggest thing we're missing. Just get 6 more creatures in the next pack and we've got a, a full-on deck here. For an aggressive deck like this, I like to be at around 17 creatures. 15 to 17 is your very basic limited creature count guidelines. Okay... Unfortunately, we opened up Stone Cold Nothing on color. There's another Join Forces, another Destroy Evil, or another Hammer Hand, all of which already feel on the lower end of our deck's power level. They all feel like cards we're cutting pretty quickly. If we splash in green, we've got Rotto, which is pretty good. Four mana, three, three, when it attacks, another uh, creature gets plus three, plus three trample. I guess when it becomes tapped, so even if you enlist it, it works. 
pretty good at enlisting if we splash that in off ridge line that could be interesting probably more interesting than join forces or destroy evil the rare is a mana fixer which theoretically mana fixers help you splash in a third color but if your mana fixer is in your splash color if it's the color that we have the less sources of in the first place, we're just not going to have the mana to cast the mana fixer anyway. Um, Temporal Firestorm is interesting because we are Boros, we are red-white. We can cast this and kick it one time, so we phase out one of our own creatures. And then uh, basically destroy everything else. If this card did not have the kicker effect, it would just not be good in our deck at all. Because we would just be wrathing our own board, but being able to sweep... Everything except one of your own cards seems pretty powerful to me. It is seven mana though, so maybe Prayer of Binding is better because it's just cheaper. It's only four mana instead of seven. This is instant speed exile removal. This is kind of weird. I'm actually going to go Prayer of Binding over that. Just go for the targeted cheap removal spell over the seven mana card because I don't know about getting to seven mana here that consistently. Although it is a slower format, here's another excellent removal spell. We're really just getting fed from this direction. Citizens Arrest, 3 mana to exile a creature, Planeswalker, and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Very, very good. There's also Lightning Strike, which is what I was talking about as being a reason Fires of Victory is probably just bad. There's also an on-color uncommon. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Vigilance, Trample. When it attacks, all other attacking creatures control get plus 1, plus 1. Red creatures get trampled, white creatures untap. That's pretty interesting. That's probably pretty strong. But I've got a lot of four drops already. Citizens Arrest or Lightning Strike, I think, are the picks. I'm going to go Lightning Strike here. Oh, wow. Another on-color rare. This one's a Soldier Tribal card. We've only got one Soldier in the deck, but it's still a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> it's still a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, and I need more creatures. I don't think we can wheel Resolute Reinforcements as much as I'd love that. If we could get Resolute Reinforcements and Valiant Veteran, that'd be sick. I don't think we wheel the Veteran either. I think somebody's going to just take it for fun, for lols, and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to go for Resolute Reinforcements because the Veteran the veteran really doesn't do anything right now with our, um, with our Soldier count, sadly. So I'm just going to start taking a bunch of Soldiers just on the off chance it somehow comes back here. That'd be pretty sick. I'd like to try the Branch Rider out here. One mana haste creature with a good fire breathing effect, getting some additional power later in the game. Juniper Order Root Weaver is definitely good if you have green consistently, but we do not. We have it very, very occasionally. Take up the shield's a fine trick, but we've got a lot of non-creature stuff right now. We want more creatures. Let's take a Viashino Branch Rider. Okay, another Argivian Cavalier. All right, come on in. Take that over the uh, the combat trick here. A little sad. We have a ton of knights and, like, no soldiers. It's so sad. For that, uh, that soldier build around rare. I feel like the ridge line's probably just staying in for Branch Rider. We're probably not playing Rada. Because I don't think I'm going to want to put a bunch of uh, forests here. don't think we're going to play Enthrall to the Pit. We don't have any ways to sacrifice opposing creatures. The cool thing about this, this is for, like, a, uh, a Steal and Sacrifice kind of deck. Rakdos Sack deck. And it just has a built-in way to sacrifice your opposing creature if you, uh, if you kick it. This is weird. This can't be good, can it? A 2-mana 0-2 that deals 1 damage to a creature next turn? Maybe? <laughs> this is a super weird card. This probably does not make the cut. I'll put Faith Bonder in here, though. Get that creature count up still. Another Join Forces again would be fine, but I'm trying to cut out more non-creature stuff. I'll still play the one Join Forces, but I'm not going to throw another in here. This is very interesting to me. If you have no other artifacts, you can spend two mana to get a 0-2 flyer. Then next turn, you tap your 0-2 flyer to do one damage to a creature of Planeswalker. That's kind of it, though, because then I, I guess you hit your opponent for four. This has to be bad. It's so narrow. Weird card. Weird card. Kind of cool, though, but we're going to cut that right now. We're going to cut Thrall to the Pit. We're going to cut Rada. Still need to cut six more cards. This is 15 creatures, but one Saga that makes creatures. Mm. But we're still not cutting any creatures, that's for sure. Take another Branch Rider here with the uh, the Wooded Ridge line. Um, Hammerhand, Destroy Evil, Fires of Victory are all 
very potential cuts, and then fire NATO's a lot of mana. But I guess I'll be cutting fires of victory here. So I'll be cutting more removal. Ooh, it's an incredibly late citizen's arrest. Join the party, citizen's arrest. I've got enough creatures now. I can pass this faith bonder. I think. Ooh, our Givian Phalax is a pretty nice uh, late game card. We've got six two mana creatures and two one mana creatures. We can take a nice late game creature. One less for each creature you control. We're going to have a decent amount of creatures. It's also a soldier if we somehow get that rare last pick, but I think it was in one of those other packs that's already disappeared. Yeah, the soldier build around is gone. Sad time. All right, so we're going to move on into the deck building here. I am not going to edit this video at all because I am going to try to just get this draft video out to you all as quickly as as possible for the early access event that way i can just get on into playing some more drafts on the twitch channel in the link in the description below get as much experience with the format as i can this looks like a very sweet deck here um we just need to cut a few cards we could even cut a land or two i think average curve is 2.8 and that is taking into account it's treating the phalanx as a six mana card when it's more often than not going to be four mana or less so I think we can cut a land in here. Um, yeah, it's 17 creatures and a Saga for a creature, so it's kind of 18 creatures. I could cut one Branch Rider, I guess, or one of the two drop creatures. These all seem pretty fine, though. I don't know about Faith Bonder, but I'd like to try it out. I'd like to give everything a chance. Maybe Triple Cavalier is a bit much. I think that card's going to be strong enough. That it's going to be the kind of card I'm going to want three of in a deck. But uh, I would rather cut a duplicate this early in the format. I'd much rather cut a duplicate than a one of if I can. Uh, so we can try out the widest variety of cards. So I think I want to just cut the card that I have three copies of, even if it's probably not the correct cut. Although we can lower the curve by cutting one of these two War Brutes. Then I don't have a lot of finishers. I'm just super, super aggro early, but that's probably fine with these tricks and stuff to use. Yeah, let's cut the War Brute. Four more cards to cut. I am going to cut a land here, and then three more cards to cut. I guess, as I was saying before, it's probably... Even though I think the best build of this deck probably keeps both Furious Bellows and then cuts these three... I'd like to try these out a little bit and see how often they have targets and that kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to cut one bellow and then uh, and keep one of these in. So we'll try to destroy evil, see how often our opponents have toughness for greater stuff or enchantments. See how often that plays out well for us. Yeah, we'll try this out as the deck. Are there any other creatures in the sideboard? No, the Warbrute and the Rada, so there's nothing I can try out over the third Cavalier, second Steel Crusher, second Branch Rider. Unless I really want to try a very, very bad splash for Rada, or a rough splash on the mana base, and I don't want to do that here. All right, this is going to be a fun one. Boros Aggro. We're going to be trying out what is likely to be the most aggressive strategy in the format here. Double check our mana, 12-12, and even split in colors. There we go, 8-8 eight, eight split, 8 white sources, 8 red sources, 1 green source for the double branch rider. So on rare occasion we can kick that card. Looks pretty spicy and I'm very excited to see how this deck plays as we head into the gameplay. I was going to uh, say that completely in the deck building process and then, uh, and then just sit here silently while I waited to get into a round and then I remembered... Don't have time to edit this one today. We're gonna have to talk through the uh, through the matchmaking. All right, we have made it into round one, nice and quickly though, nice and efficiently. We've got both of our uh, one one haste, but no red source. This is probably gonna have to be a mulligan with four red cards in hand, only one castable card. Sad day there. Sad day. It's gonna have to be a mulligan. We are on the draw though, so we will draw turn one. Opponent is on the play. See how things work out for us after a mulligan here. So exciting for this! Excited for this fourth. There's so much cool stuff going on with all the off-color kickers. The dual lands at common are great. I've seen a lot of packs that have two dual lands in them as well. So it's, they're not even tied to just one per pack sometimes, 
which is really cool. It means there could be like a lot of dual lands. Um, do I have any double white cards in this deck? I do not remember. I know I have the double red saga. I'm gonna get rid of the white source because I think I, I know that I have a double red card and I don't know if I have any that cost two white that are double white. So opponents on the play here, we'll see what they're doing. Oh, they've got a pet on. I don't have a pet. I came unprepared. Let's get our raging goblins in here, our one mana, one one haste. Start things off aggressively. No, nothing from our opponent turn two. We don't have a turn two play either, unfortunately. Okay. It's actually it's pretty spicy with enlist cards as well in the late game because then you can buff this up and send in your enlist card and you still have your fire breather on the board so it's kind of like you get to attack with a fire breathing creature every turn that's pretty cool don't think i want to drop the berserker this early I think i'd rather play the cavalier did not really want to get the one damage in with Branch Rider. I could, and then I'm threatening to buff it, but Phyrexian Rager is the kind of card that gives you the value right when it hits the board, so they would be 100% okay with a trade of Branch Rider into Rager, and I would not be. So they cut down our next creature, and they dropped Lagomo's Hand of Hatred. At the beginning of combat on their turn, they get a 2-1 Trample Haste. That is incredible. They have to sack it at the end step, but they get one every turn. They can always replace it. If five or more creatures died this turn, they can tutor their deck for a card. This seems like a very nice card, even if they can never tutor their deck. Double block and kill Rager. We are definitely at the back on the back foot after that turn, with cut down being just very efficient removal, being able to cut down and drop Lagamos in the same turn. No land for us, but Berserker blocks two ones very well, and if it ever dies, we can uh, make it better. So I think... Here is where I am going to offer the trade of Branch Rider into Logomos. And if they don't take that trade, we're just going to play this Berserker. Try to slow down this onslaught of elementals coming out of this card. Another Phyrexian Rager. Very, very nice stuff from our opponent. This is going to be one of the best black commons. Just a very good deal. Another one of these Spirited Companion, Priest of Ancient Lore... Angelic Overseer type cards. They're going to be a little bit of a pillar of the format. Just a really, really nice, efficient creature that draws you a card when you play it. We look pretty dead here. Opponent is drowning in value with Double Rager. They've got the aggressive lead with Legomos and a Hammer Hand as well to really cement it. Make sure we're not blocking well this turn. Looks like we're probably dying. We're probably doing so pretty quickly. Do we hit the fourth mana now, so we've... Well, we missed the one land drop. So we may make it to Fire Nado soon. We could gain a couple life here. Get a 2-1 that can block one of their 2-2s two in trade. Destroy Evil doesn't look great here. I can just kill a Hammer Hand, which is whatever. Play Dragon Whelp as a 2-3 to block their 2-2, two -two, but it doesn't block anything else well. It does make the most of our mana, though. Sure, we will drop a Dragon Whelp. Now at least we have all kinds of blockers that are threatening to block their two power creatures well. So maybe they hit us with less stuff now. They just hit us with like the 3-3. Three, three. I suppose if they try to hit us with the 3-3, three, three, I could double block with Dragon Whelp and a 1-1. One, one. Oh wow. Smash to Dust was pretty big there. Kill two of our creatures. Things just keep getting worse and worse for us here. I guess I just stop all this damage and kill the Rager. I didn't know Smash to Dust is one-sided, just one to each creature your opponent's control. Slightly better than I thought. Maybe I was not giving that enough credit.
Oh, they have a combat trick too? All right, we were not gonna win this one. All of the stuff here. I have Fire Nado, Fire Nado Legomos, I'm taking five. They've got one card left in their hand to try to finish us with. We've got a Lightning Strike. Okay. I mean, we're not completely out of it if, if the last card in their hand is a dead draw and they just have land land. Then we Lightning Strike the Rager and Mesa Cavalier the smaller one. That is far from a dead draw. That is a flying threat. If they double pump it, I can kill it with Destroy Evil. So I'm playing Cavalier to block the 2-2 Rager. And then destroy eviling the uh, flyer, I guess. Okay, I guess I can't destroy evil it now because they can only buff it once, so I can lightning strike it instead. Okay, they can pump it twice now, but they can play around that pretty easily and just pump it to to when it's lethal. Yeah, there's no way now. Because if I block Apparition, they'll just pump it so they win the combat. I could Lightning Strike in response to keep Cavalier, but then I'm taking five and going to one. I really need to find some way to kill two creatures here, and I don't think there's a way to do that. Unless they just get really greedy and double pump. I'll just play on the off chance that they double pump. Alright, pump once. If they just let this resolve, we're just dead. Okay. The greed play. Now we get to destroy a creature with toughness four or greater. Oh, that worked out so well for us. Okay, now I have a shot if I top deck. I did top deck. That can kill the uh, smaller rager. I can kill this one while they're tapped out. Or try to get a combat trick out of their hand here. We know they were playing a card to give indestructible, so I think I'd do this while they're tapped out. All right, it's still an incredibly uphill battle here. We have to draw a lot better than our opponent, but we've got an actual shot now. Uh, that is a big creature. Four mana, four, four here. Not ideal. That is gonna one-shot us if we can't block it every turn and can't block it there. It is gonna one-shot us. And that is going to be 0-1 to start it off. Just a really, really good initial curve from our opponent. And their deck is just chocked full of Phyrexian Ragers. Which means I got to play quite a few more cards uh, than us there. Showing off the power of those little card advantage plays like Phyrexian Rager. So 0-1 to start off. So we head into Game 2 of the Dominar United Early Access again. Again. Event. Uh, I would like to once again thank Wizards of the Coast very much for this early access account. I'm just going to make sure to kind of thank them, I don't know, between every other round or something. Uh, for uh, for all the legal um, disclaimers and everything. This is sponsored via this account. We are not uh, getting sponsored with any money, but Wizards of the Coast did give me everything you see me playing with today very much brought to you by them. So we're against a blue-white deck here with Idyllic Beachfront. They could be playing this just for a domain because they are in green. They're going to drop an Urborg Lurgoyf, which doesn't really do anything, so that's fine. Um, I think I'm just playing more creatures. I don't really see a need to uh, hold up a lightning strike right now. Because again, Lurgoyf is just needs to wait till they have a lot of creatures in Grave to start getting big, which is going to be quite some time. Let's just play our best aggressive creatures. They're probably just the two power enlist creatures. Ooh, very cool deck from our opponent. Very multicolored domain deck over there. They have a, a blue-white and a black-white uh, dual land on the board. 
as well as a forest. So they have four colors right now. Everything but red. I probably attack with these both separately. I don't really need to scry into anything specific right now. And attacking with both separately means they can't just chump block all four damage. Yeah, they're going to take four to the face, and uh, we'll just drop some more creatures and hold up our two tricks for next turn. If our opponent does not have a board wipe, then um, I think we should be good. So we can clear out some blockers with Lightning Strike here and Furious Bellow. Queen Elena of Ruadak. 2-2. Two, two. Power and toughness equal the number of creatures they control. When they create tokens, they get duplicate tokens. I think I'm just going to shoot her pre-combat to get her out of the way. Um, as it stands, we can just attack with everybody, so I think I will. I guess we make it so all they can do is chump by using Faith Bonders enlist here. Insufficient creatures. Oh. Okay, so I click, and then I... Okay, interesting. Good to good to learn how that works. All right. I'm doing this so I, if they don't block, I still get in for all of the damage this way, as I would have if I attacked with all four. But if I attacked with all four, they could have just blocked the one three, and then I wouldn't have wanted to Furious Bellow their little Lurgoyf. I'd rather hold this in case they play like a four, four, or five, five blocker. So uh, by enlisting, I'm making it so their only blocks they can make will get the Lurgoyf killed. They can't stop one damage without losing Lurgoyf like they could if I didn't enlist. Okay, uh, i probably hold this in hand for Guardian at this point. Yeah, make sure we can make the Guardian indestructible. Oh, we actually have Furious Bellow as well, so it kind of... Just go nuts, go nuts here. I think I'm gonna scry, but then just... Do this, I guess? Enlist is wild. I, I have no idea how to enlist correctly yet. Like, which creatures are attacking, which ones are just helping attack. Hit Furious Bellow time. Now we have Destroy Evil to just blow up whatever high toughness creature they play, if that's the plan. If they can go wide again, that'll be a problem. Xanojanin. That's just a big high toughness creature. I'll just try to destroy it before we untap. If it doesn't resolve, then we'll know at least. Bite down response. Okay, I can give indestructible. And they will scoop them up. That is going to be game. We are one and one now. Yeah, I suppose there is green removal in this front. There are two different ones. There's the bite down that's an instant to have a creature deal damage equal to its power to another creature, and the uncommon one is one green mana to have one of your creatures fight something at instant speed. So, had I remembered that um, at that point, uh, I, I think I probably would have just held up the destroy something with toughness four or greater. That way, if they tried to remove one of my creatures, I can make sure to kill that in response. Um, however, I probably still would have ended up using it pre-combat if they didn't cast their removal, because they were probably going to try to go for a block and then use removal. And because I was in a board state where they were just dead on board, if I went for the attack, I was going to go for the attack. Go for the kill there, so. But that is one thing to, uh, to try to remember for your future drafts. Green has multiple removal spells that require them to have a, uh, a solid creature on the board. That you can counter those removal spells 
by destroying the creature they're using at instant speed. Just one of those good things to keep in mind based on whatever draft format you're playing. If green's got a lot of instants like that, hold up your removal like that in different scenarios. Definitely one of those things that is not easy to do early in the format, though, so... 2 on Vigilance. It's just going to trade in the Steel Crusher, I guess. And be moderately annoying. That's fine. I've got more creatures to replace it with. It's a fine trade. They are not going to trade. Okay. We'll just drop the Cavalier then. Keep going wide here. Opponents on blue-black. They've got a card that has a green kicker. And it's got the ability to make one of their lands a basic land type of their choice to line of turn. So it can mana fix them for whatever color they need as well as add to their domain. Add to the number of different basic land types among lands they control. So interesting deck from our opponent here. I would not expect them to be just blue-black if they're running Pixie Illusionist. They're definitely having another color in here. It's not necessarily green. It's probably green. Um, but they could be running this as a mana fixture to get to some other off-color. The Raven Man. At the beginning of each end step, if a player discarded a card this turn, create a 1-1 one, one bird that can't block. And for 4 mana, they can tap it, make us discard a card at sorcery speed. Okay. So we're definitely attacking into the Raven Man, because trading into the Raven Man is just good for us. Okay, now they're going to kill the Steel Crusher. Nope, swap things around, kill the Cavalier. Still going to save Furious Bellow right now. We'll still have four creatures out after this. And I quite enjoy having Furious Bellow for, just like last game, if my opponent manages to get uh, a very high toughness blocker that I can't really get into otherwise. The problem with just dropping Furious Bellow just to win that combat and keep my creatures down is if my opponent does drop a 4 or 5 toughness drop, uh, blocker, then I'm going to have to start attacking with just one creature and a list enlisting every turn. But this way I won't have to do that. I can still just go wide and Furious Bellow. Which does make me realize that this um, Furious Bellow is actually pretty awkward in an enlist deck, because in an enlist deck, like, I already have ways to attack into, like, really big stuff later. I'm glad I didn't fire NATO pre-combat or I would have got got by that Hexproof trick. This is going to be a really nice combat trick. Plus one, plus one Hexproof and untap it. That's just a lot of stuff happening off of one card for just one mana. This is going to be a pretty big blowout kind of trick. This is not a blowout, though. This is a one-for-one -one trade. That is A-OK. -okay. And I'm just going to shoot Raven Man now and see if it uh, resolves. And we still have Furious Bellow for the next blocker. I'm just going to shore up again. All right. I can't really use Raven Man here, because if they spend their turn making us discard a card, they're taking lethal, thanks to Branch Rider's fire-breathing ability. And that would take almost all of their mana to do it. I'm going to draw two, make us discard one. Raven Man gets them a bird, but the bird can't block. Uh, yeah, we're in a pretty dang good position here. Uh, now I get to show off the power of Branch Rider with Enlist, which is really cool. So normally, I wouldn't want to attack with this thing, because it would trade into Raven Man, but this way, I get to um, I get to threaten the lethal attack here, and still have Fire Breathing next turn. So they have to trade into Steel Crusher, and I can still dump all my mana into making this do a million damage to them next turn. So that's pretty nice. Branch Rider plus Enlist is pretty cool. Alright, opponent's got a lot of card draw here. If they find the cheap removal, they can definitely stabilize. We are out of cards. Just a couple 1-1s one on board. If they don't find a cheap enough blocker or removal spell here, though, Branch Rider is threatening lethal combat damage this turn. Six damage to the face. Five from Branch Rider and one from this 1-1 one -one soldier. And they're going to scoop them up. They just don't find a cheap enough blocker or removal spell, and Boros is going to get there again. We are going to be two and one. Or one and one. I actually already forgot. I feel like I might have counted my uh, chickens before they hatched there. Nope, two and one. We did win another game earlier. Very nice. Heading into round four here. All right, check out our opening hand. We've got a turn two Steel Crusher, turn three Cavalier. Let's go. 
Got this Berserker. This card seems bad. It's It's been pretty awkward the one time that we drew it. I actually might have drawn it twice and then just never wanted to play it the second time I drew it. Very, very weird card. I guess it's for, like, Rakdos. If you can sacrifice it after it enlists. Oh my god. My opponent has two two-mana two-ones that can consistently come back from their graveyard to the battlefield. Turn one, they play a two-one. Turn two, they play a two-one. That's threatening. I have a one-three at least if they don't have cheap removal, but might get aggroed out here by the opponent. The aggro deck on the play that just goes two-one, two-one removal spell. Yeah, that is a thing in most limited formats you're going to have to deal with. Unfortunate. We're looking pretty bad here. We're just going to play another one-three. Try to keep these conscripts off of us. Even if they kill this Berserker, we get to kill something. Ooh, yeah, let's go, Balduvian Berserker. Show us the value. If I kill Conscript, I'm stopping more damage. If I kill Battlefly Swarm, I'm killing something that won't come back, come back later. I think I killed a Swarm. Alright, that was the best I've seen Berserker be. That was pretty good. Okay, now we just go wide. And just trade one ones into the two ones, and they're kind of out of cards because they dumped their hand so fast. So our hope here is just trade two one ones for two two ones. All right, yeah, they're stuck. Just can't do much anymore. Um, we need to get a better, a higher toughness creature to attack into these things, though. I guess I can furious bellow. Yeah, I can furious bellow. You know what? I think we attack with the 1-1s, one and I'm actually cool with those trades is what we do. And then I can just resolute reinforcements when they try to attack me and still block their 2-1s with 2-1-1s. One okay, Battlefly Swarm, if that ever dies, they can bring Conscripts back. Heavy debate going on here, how they want to attack. If they're going to attack with both. I will trade a, a token for one of those conscripts. Alright, land for turn. We've got a Mesa Cavalier once we get rid of the Battlefly Swarm. Uh, you know what, at this point, with a Cavalier coming down? Whatever. Furious Bellow, Furious Bellow, whatever's going to die to the conscripts. Because they need their black mana up to return this cult conscript from their graveyard to the battlefield, so they're not going to do a death touch block, so we're cool with that trade. Now we get to scry one here. That's huge. Join forces is pretty, pretty big here on the sport state. And then I'm not going to buff this because I'm going to play Cavalier. They're going to be down to a single 2 1 on the board playing off the top. And we've got all these creatures. Feels like a really nice uh, stabilize here against these cult conscripts. That was very, very sketchy. Turn one, turn two, and they just go two, one, two, one. But just ran out of gas here. We've got enough creatures to, to block this stuff going on. And with join forces, this is the easiest all attack yet again. I don't really think it matters, the other creature we target. They're down to nine now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thanks to Branch Rider's ability. So yeah, they're going to scoop them up, and we are going to be three and one with the Boros Enlist deck running up into Silver Tier 4 in the Early Access event. I'm not doing a whole lot of enlisting. I'm just kind of playing Boros Aggro. We've made a couple enlist plays that were pretty cool. Obviously, we've been enlisting with the card that lets us scry. The biggest thing I think we've done with enlist was use it in order to keep our fire-breathing creature on the board so we could pump a bunch of mana into giving it extra power just to enlist it in the aid of another creature attacking so that uh, we'd still have it around for the attack the turn after that. That was probably the coolest endless thing 
that we've done so far. We're going to be against Talia Vess this round. And we are definitely going to need to mulligan this hand. This mono red hand. This is a Boros hand with Guardian of New Banalia turn two. And everything is two or less for these two mana, so that's pretty good. I think we get rid of Goblin Picker because I'm not going to need to discard and draw a card anytime soon here. I'm going to like everything I draw for a little while. Because lands are going to be good this early in the game, as are most non-lands. I guess we could have kept the Goblin Picker just in case uh, we got mana screwed and we hit a bunch of four or five mana cards. The Picker can discard those too. I do generally like it better as a way to uh, get rid of a bunch of lands later in the game. But I suppose it does both perfectly well. So Talia is going to be on black or red here. Sulfur Springs is the mana fixer. The pain lands are back in standard. Six of the ten are in standard. The other four will be coming out in Brothers War. Menace 2-3... Doesn't do anything else if it wasn't kicked. Okay. Three mana, two, three mana. It's pretty good. I'm just gonna do some Guardian of Banalia stuff here. Check with that thing as a uh, as a three two. Um, I don't love join forces right now, actually. I guess I have two more creatures to play. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of any of these draws, I don't know. Kinda weird. I'll trade a 2-2 two, two in my hand for their 2-3 menace on board if they want to do that. Or a 2-2 two, two in hand for their 2-2 two, two on board. I think I'd rather do that than Furious Bellow here. 2-2 two, two in hand for 2-2 two, two on board. And then we'll just play another one. Next time I might just Furious Bellow. Because now I will not have a creature to play next turn. So she's got four mana up. She's going to go for Garna, Bloodfist of Keld. 4-3. Whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking and otherwise just deal damage to us. Pretty good when you're aggressive, drawing a card every time an attacking creature dies. I think I'm just going to arrest her. Goodbye, Garna. I'll arrest them. I'm not arresting Talia here. Alright, let's pass turn. If she's got some removal here, it's going to be bad. All right, Hurler Cyclops, big old 5-4. It's not removal, so Furious Bellow can kill that. That's only if that blocks something. We're going to have to let something die here. Let something die to Balduvian Atrocity. Unfortunately. I guess I could discard this land to Guardian. Yeah, we could just attack with only Guardian. Cry away the lands. Yeah, she has to sacrifice creatures to deal damage to any target, and she doesn't look like she has as many expendable creatures right now, so... I don't think the Cyclops matters a massive amount currently. I think I would rather keep Ridgeline in hand for Guardian than play it out right now. Okay, land for turn. Just gonna send both in. She's not block. If she's got a way to deal a million damage to me, then, uh, then she's got it. This might just be a Wrath, though. Just five damage to everything. 
would not be ideal. That card does exist in this format. It's going to be a Phyrexian Warhorse. 3-3 Blocker. She can crack back for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 thanks to using Cyclops' ability. I feel like I enlist Guardian and Cavalier here. I'm threatening seven damage in. And then I can Furious Bellow to make it lethal if she doesn't block. I guess I don't enlist the other one. But if I enlist it, I make it so blocking with Warhorse is going to get it killed even if I don't Furious Bellow. Yeah, I probably do enlist here. Scry those to the bottom. So she has to block one of these to survive, but she doesn't know that. I guess she can sacrifice two creatures with Hurler Cyclops to survive. The, the Furious Bellow. She's gonna block the Guardian. Okay, so if I Bellow, it's gonna be six damage and she will not be dead. So I'm just gonna discard the card then. Okay, she's going to use a Warhorse to kill the Branch Rider so I don't have a blocker up. She could find lethal here. That's 9 damage to us. If she plays a Haste creature, we're actually dead. Hopefully no Haste coming down here. Double checking the board state and making sure, but it feels like a haste creature coming out. Okay, no, fire NATO. All right, we're still in it for now. No haste creature. That was very spooky. Okay, hold up all the blockers and pass turn. Land to play Dragon Whelp here. I can do that post combat if I don't need to um, discard a card in this combat, but I think I will. We need to enlist and uh, attack with a four power creature right now to get in. Destroy evil is interesting, but it might not actually be good next turn when the Cyclops is gone anyway. I guess I can scry it to the bottom with Bellow. But I can also just discard Bellow and then just play the Whelp. It's probably what I'm going to do this turn. I think I'm putting that on the bottom, weirdly enough. Even though it can kill Cyclops. Okay, so once we discard a card, they're going to um, sack Atrocity to shoot the 1-1. One, one. And we're just going to play a lethal, lethal Flyer here. Alright, the 1-1 one, one is dead. I guess Dragon Whelp is not lethal. It will be four damage in the sky. Still pretty good though. All 
All right, looks like Talia has not drawn into an out there, so she's going to scoop them up, and we are going to be four and one now for the Dominar United Early Access Draft number one. Very sick stuff from the Boros Enlist deck. Really, really good stuff from our Enlist Rare in a lot of these games, to be fair. The two mana, two, two, then Enlists. Still have not gotten to play our Rare Dragon yet, but that one is another cool one I'm very excited to... Uh, to try to get on the board could be very very cool but we'll see whatever happens now i'm going to be pretty happy with this four and three for the first draft is going to be pr a pretty good record pretty solid record and uh we're going to get that record or better at this point so all i really want at this point is to play my dragon one time that would be pretty sweet not the Dragon Whelp, the rare dragon. I see how it is. Magic Arena's got jokes. Okay, playing against a blue-green. I think blue-green's gonna be one of the more domain-centric decks. Oh yeah, they're gonna play a blue-green uh, duel and then a red source. So root wall uh, already domain three out of five. I like the domain symbol a lot. You can see where it shows off each color that they have. They have green, red, and blue lands on board for domain. That's very cool. Very cool visual. Squee, dubious monarch. I'm gonna die to Squee. Squee makes a 1 1 every time he attacks, and uh, Squee can get escaped from the graveyard by exiling four other cards and spending four mana. Yeah, Squee's gonna, gonna mess my stuff up bad. This 1 1 stays around forever if I don't kill it on blocks <sighs> all right we're getting squeed hard that's that's for sure so I get to vigilance attack here which is cool I could double block squee now Blocking with two power and six toughness if they have a combat trick, they uh, they mess that up, but if they don't have a combat trick, they just don't attack him with Squee. Uh, this Root Walla is plus three, plus three. It'll be a five, five. Pff, ouch. All right, you got it. Root Walla gets in then. And Rada, Coalition Warlord. Whenever Rada becomes tapped, another creature gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of basic land types among lands. That's plus three, plus three every time Rada becomes tapped. Um, I could hold up Destroy Evil as a way to blow up whatever they buff. Or I could just play a big Warbrute blocker here. Kick a Branch Rider. I'm going to play a Warbrute. Warbrute threatens to block Rada. So they're going to need to enlist Rada or kill our Warbrute or something to get, uh, to get Rada's ability going. Yeah, so they're just going to attack with the Root Walla. Again, threatens to be a 5-5. They kill one of our creatures with that if they tap out. This could be bad if they have a really big trick. Otherwise, they just kill our War Brute and pass the turn. I'm interested in seeing what happens here, learning what the combat tricks are in the format. Alright, cool. They're just going to kill the 3-4. It's not, like, excellent for us, but certainly not bad. Now I'm gonna Branch Rider, I think. We'll have Destroy Evil later. So Branch Rider trades into Rada. Pretty sweet we actually got to kick the Branch Rider here. That is, uh, that is pretty absurd. That is not enjoyable at all. Um... That's pretty dang bad. Um, definitely killing Rada. I can chump Squee and kill the 1-1. One, one. Or I can just kill the 1-1 one, without losing a creature by doing this. Take 8, though. Eight, go to six. I could play Welp and hold up Destroy Evil next turn. They just have a three, three, and a two, two. 
The 3-3 three, three can get buffed though, so it's going to hit me pretty hard. Mm, if they buff it, I can... Oh, that's only toughness based, not power based. Huh. Maybe I kill Branch Rider instead, because I'm not going to be able to kill that with toughness, but I can kill whatever Rata buffs. With Destroy Evil, which I know I have up. This feels weird, but I, I, I feel like this might be a better block for us. Okay. So I can double block Rada with Dragon Weapon a 1-3, and then I can kill Squee with Destroy Evil. So I can get everything on board, off the board. Didn't want to use any tricks here, so hopefully that means they don't have a trick. Fingers crossed. Right. We have a couple 1-3s. Our opponent has so many more cards in hand still, though. They've just played some really impactful stuff each turn. Well, Prayer of Binding's a good draw. We're gonna have to get rid of the 6-6 six, six here. I don't really see much other options, so we'll just kill it right now so I can get damage into... Might as well. I should actually hold on to lands in case I draw my card that can give itself indestructible. Oh, they can recast Squee. Oh, wait, not yet. They need one more card in Grave to recast Squee. Ooh, another Branch Bender, Bender is a pretty sick uh, top deck. I'm going to die to this Dragon Whelp. It's going to deal four damage to us each turn. We are going to die to this Dragon Whelp. Is there any way that we outrace them? Probably not. We gotta try, right? It's kind of our only shot. Either we top deck removal immediately or we somehow outrace them. If they drop Squee, we chump Squee and block the 1-1. If they get the, uh, the card engraved for it. Okay, looks like they're just gonna hit us with the Whelp. Adding two attacks to that thing. Attack number one hits us for four, halves our life total. Still got three more cards in hand to play around with. Vine Shaper Prodigy is one of them, a very, very good common, allowing them to look at the top three cards of the library, put one into hand and the rest on bottom. It's basically the um, the top common from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, which I don't remember what it was called. Organ Hoarder, that's the one. Just one less power and harder to cast. Still very good, though. Um, we cannot possibly kill them now, right? 6-7, I could have 8 mana up, but I can only buff Branch Rider twice with that mana, which is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can do 9 damage total if they block with absolutely nothing, then I die to Dragon Whelp. Alright. That's an attack all. Scoop them up. And we are four and two, heading into round seven. What could be the last round now? Now we are at risk of dropping out of the draft at four and three. It's honestly not the end of the world. Four or three runs are super fine by me. Especially for the first draft in the format. So let's see. These games have been going actually pretty quick. I'm pretty sure that's my deck's fault. Um, one of the things I was expecting then is that this format could be pretty slow, pretty grindy again because of all the great um, slow mana fixing lands and slower multicolored mechanics like the kicker that's off color and the domain stuff going on. So I expect there's probably a lot of uh, splashing third colors and stuff in this format which can tend to lead to more grindy and slower games. But I guess now is not the best draft to see that, because even if we're against a really slow, grindy kind of deck, we are an aggro deck. I drafted a pretty basic aggro deck today, so we're not really going to show off the slower end of the format in this draft. But we'll see. I'm going to do a lot more drafts on the Twitch stream. You can find out there. 
I mean, I have Steel Crusher on two, and I really need a white source, otherwise I'm waiting till four. I think this has got to be a mulligan. This looks a lot better to me. We've got a Branch Rider on one. Probably get rid of a Cavalier and hope to make it to Dragon Whelp. Unfortunately, Mr. Metronome is on the play here, so we're not going to be super aggressive, but on the plus side, that means we are on the draw to make up for the mulligan. That is a thing. Juniper Order Root Weaver, just a uh, two mana two to stop the 1-1 one, one from hitting them. Alright. Sends in for two. Drops Argivian Cavalier. This is the one pretty bad part about the Branch Rider. Very bad against the 1-1 one, one tokens that White can produce. Happy to see a matchup where this plays pretty poorly, because I've enjoyed it a decent bit in our other matchups today. It's kind of nice to get brought back down to reality, get a little bit lower on the card. This card is very bad when you're playing against the 1-1 one, one token deck. So nice to uh, to see that happen. All trade Cavaliers, Slam Dunk, Insta Trade. We are definitely not on the aggressive this game, because... Metronome's deck is aggro as well, and he's on the play, so he's just in the aggressive lead. That is just how these matchups go. Whoever's on the play is the aggro deck. I think I want to play the better blocker right now, play the 3-4. What is pretty spicy about Branch Riders, if it does stick around, which it probably won't, I'm probably going to buff it and trade it into a 2-2 or a 3-2 or something like that, but uh, if it does... We do get to do the cool enlist thing late game, where I just make it super high power and then just put all that power on my enlist card. Shalai's Acolyte. Just a 5 mana 3 4 flyer, okay. Do I want to rest that or just play my Dragon Whelp? I kind of want to rest that. Seems like a big enough deal. Got Resolute Reinforcements at instant speed. Can I have Warbrute trade into 4 1 1s? I'd rather be blocking with it. Scout the Wilderness. Ooh, you can make some 1-1s one in this format. Two more 1-1s. One Maybe the, um, the card that does one damage to each creature in your opponent's deck is just so good in this matchup that it's just main deckable. This feels incredible against green-white. That one card would just nullify like 75% of what Mr. Metronome's done this game. So it might be a little higher on that card now. It's kind of a main deckable option. So we're probably dead here. Mr. Metronome's got enough 1-1s one that if he has the card that is the combat trick that puts a plus one plus one counter on every creature you control, he's just going to take over this game pretty handily, pretty quickly. Now we do have a shot, and the shot is... Mr. Metronome doesn't have that. Mr. Metronome's just going to sit here and keep making dudes, and then we can just kill Metronome with Dragon Whelp. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Tempted to hold up this mana to play another blocker. Yeah. Another 2-2 two -two on the board is probably better than dealing one more point of damage right now. Mesa Cavalier. All right, there's a flyer for Mr. Metronome. Oh, so we're dead. There it is. Whole board gets plus one, plus one. For five mana, he can put a plus one, plus one counter on the king and make another um, soldier. And if something goes really wrong, you can just sacrifice King Darien to give all of his creature tokens hexproof and indestructible. Yeah, we're dead. Just got bombed out hard there. But uh, it wouldn't even have had to been a bomb. It could have just been um, plus one, plus one counter on all the dudes and we'd still be dead. Yeah, we're tremendously dead. King Darien seems like a very, very good card. Fifteen. Technically survive this, <laughs> but 
That can't be right. I really don't think it matters if we're just dead next turn regardless. Gain a little bit of life. Five, six, seven, eight attackers. Six blockers. Be at five. Five blockers against five, six, seven, eight attackers. Three of them get in for at least two damage apiece. We're dead if we attack with Dragon Whelp. I have to gain life and pass. So I go to one by letting two, two power creatures in, and I can buff my Branch Strider so I can actually... Uh, One for one kill a creature with it. Darien gets a plus one plus one counter when they use the five. Yeah, five mana make a soldier and get a counter on Darien. Good gravy. And he can just enlist Darien anyway. And now we just die because we have to block like this and then Mr. Metronome just gets to sacrifice Darien to kill our Branch Rider and our Steel Crusher. Wait a sec, I just realized I don't even have the mana to buff the Branch Rider in the first place. It's three mana, it's not literal fire breathing. Oh, I got confused because I had Dragon Whelp and Branch Rider down. Branch Rider, it costs one more mana. To, to fire breathe it. It's three mana to give it plus two instead of just one mana for each plus one like Dragon Whelp is. So I don't even get to kill two of these things. But yeah, I mean, I feel like Mr. Metronome probably spends five mana, puts a counter on Darren, makes a 1-1, one, one, and then just gives all the, the tokens hexproof indestructible. So Metronome loses zero creatures this turn. But it is, it is a hard choice here because losing Darien is pretty big. Yeah, they lose the plus one plus one on everybody as well, so yeah, I get not sacrificing Darien there. It does make this game look like we actually have a minor, minor, minor shot now. Uh, except we don't, because now Darien makes another 1-1. One, one. Kills us with that. We're going to have three blockers. One, two, three. They get in for four, because two of the creatures are going to break through. All right, we are dead to Darien's ability on board, so I may as well just hit as hard as I can. And we're dead. I need to do one more damage, I guess, but I'm dead. Get in there, Darien. We didn't get to play our dragon card once. Oh, and it would have, like, auto won that matchup. Oh, my God. I was just saying I, I wanted to cast the Dragon War card. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, that would have immediately won that game. If we played that the turn before Metronome played Darien, it's all gone. I guess it would have killed all of our own stuff too, though. You know, we had a 3-4. I think we had a 3-4 and a 2-3 flyer at one point in that game. I mean, it would have been a sick draw. I don't know if it would have won us the game, though, because it would have killed a lot of our own cards as well. But yeah, I, I'm sad I didn't get to play with this card that I drafted. That's probably the coolest card that I drafted. It's the pack one pick one, but other than that, we got to play with pretty much everything else. Got some experience with the cards. Uh, pretty happy with everything's performance. Um, Branch Rider was definitely pretty bad in that last matchup. Um, Destroy Evil actually usually had a target. 
Um, it was it was pretty funny in one of those losses when we got our opponent to double buff so that we would have the destroy evil target. We got another turn out of the game with that. That was uh, that was pretty spicy. Guardian of New Banalia was incredible. Most of our commons and uncommons performed about as expected, which was pretty good. Berserker did not look very good to me at first, and now that I've played with it, it still feels pretty bad. This might just not be the right kind of deck for it. I guess the idea is if you get into like a massive lead, you get in this position where you're attacking with this thing as like a 3-3 or 4-3 and whether or not they block it, it's really bad for them because they're going to get hit for a lot or you're just going to shoot their face or one of their creatures. But a card that only performs well when you're winning the game is not generally a good card. You want your cards to be more flexible than that, be able to work well in multiple positions. That's why removal spells are really good, especially ones like Lightning Strike. This is why Lightning Strike is such an incredible removal spell, because if you're winning the game, you get to leverage your removal spells to clear your opponent's board and help your creatures attack in and get in for even more damage and really compound your winning position. But if you're losing the game, you get to use the removal spell to keep your opponent's biggest threats off of you and try to just protect yourself. So that's why removal spells are generally so good limited, is that you really want cards that are good in a variety of positions in the game, and Berserker really feels very win more. It just feels super bad at blocking by itself. Like, sure, it blocks two twos. Sure, it does one damage to something if you block and it dies, but I don't know. That felt like probably the worst card in our deck, even worse than our kind of filler commons. Never got to try out the Argivian Phalanx either. We usually had a couple creatures out, so it seems like it would have been pretty reasonable. Um, Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the overview of everything in the deck that performed differently than I thought it would. Everything else was pretty basic, pretty pretty bread and butter stuff. Uh, liked it a lot. Really cool format. Very excited to play a ton of it, and I will be streaming tons of this on my Twitch channel. The link in the description below. Even if you're catching this video later and you didn't see those drafts live, you can check that link out, and Twitch will save the VODs for another couple weeks if you want to catch up on those drafts. But if you just want to see more YouTube videos like this, stick around on the channel, like, comment, and subscribe to let the YouTube algorithm know to send you some more of these videos in your notification feeds. We've got tons of great stuff on the horizon with Dominar United launching. I'm going to have a draft guide up very soon. And I will also just be playing daily draft and sealed videos of the format for pretty much the next month here. We've got an arena open for the format coming up, as well as a qualifier weekend, a bunch of big events to play in, big competitive events. So very excited to get in those as we get more experience in the format. But for now, we're in the honeymoon phase. Things have just have just started off, and uh, I guess the newlywed phase. Um, and I'm just really excited to to keep screwing around in the format, seeing what's possible, seeing what's viable, and uh, and that's what we're going to be doing in the coming days. So once again, thank you all very much for watching, and thank you very much to Wizard of the Coast yet again at the end of the video here for the early access account. I really, really appreciate it. It does make making these draft videos uh, in a timely manner much, much easier. We get to do it in the early access event and everything, which is super, super fun. Let's me get a lot of experience in with the format for you all. So, uh, so yeah, thanks again to Wizards of the Coast for the early access account. But outside of all that, that is going to end today's video. Thank you once again for watching, and I will see you all again soon for some more Magic Arena.